Hey guys, it's Josh Mall here again with Swimming Pool Science. And today, we're draining this pool. As you can see, this pool is pretty bad. Just to give you an idea, with my polarized sunglasses, I can kind of make out the steps, but not much more than that. And this thing is green. Take a look at this chlorine floater. Now, it's not that the, um, the homeowner just, it's not that they didn't take care of it, it's just that they got away from it with the water chemistry, um, the stabilizer climbed, the calcium climbed, phosphates climbed, a lot of stuff climbed up when they were just paying attention to um, pH and just keeping chlorine levels in the normal ranges and the alkalinity in check, but there's a lot of other parameters of water chemistry. Either way, it's going to be more economical and quicker to just drain this thing out and clean it. So um, we're going to go through those steps. If you watch my acid wash video, then uh, you already have an idea of how things are supposed to be drained. But so in just a second here, we're going to go ahead and brush this pool down because um, what that's going to do is we're just going to allow us to brush most, brush most of this algae off the walls here while the pool is well, or while the um, while the algae rather is all moist and soft and everything, we can brush it all off. And we can do that. That's going to save us because tomorrow. Um, a good portion of whatever's on the walls will have dried out and it's going to be a pain to get off. So uh, we're going to give this a good solid brushing all the way around right now and get as much of that loose as we can. So that'll come off and uh, maybe even someone will get it picked up and, and uh, go down the tubes with the water. As you can see, I'm brushing, the direction I'm brushing is down to the deep end to where my pump is. Because I want as much of that dirty water, I want to pick up as much of that dirty water as I possibly can. So just trying to get everything brushed in that direction. Everything I can do now is going to save me work at the bottom of the pool tomorrow. Now, you made sure to shut your pump off, right? Because if not, I'm going to have to go back and make another video about replacing nipples and seals and all the melted parts that are going to be inside your pump tomorrow. Well, we're back and it's the next day. Let's see how the pool looks. As you can see, this one's pretty filthy and we've got a lot of work ahead of us. But the uh, brushing we did yesterday, you'll notice, uh, is going to help us a lot on the walls. You can see a couple spots that I didn't quite get, and those are going to be a little bit of extra work uh, to scrub those off. But nonetheless, I think it's time to get our hands and feet dirty. So once we're ready to get underway, we got to get this thing wet. We got to get everything wet that's been sitting dry. That water soaks back in. We can really scrub that off. Now while you're doing this, just like when you're brushing, you want to make sure you're pushing everything down to the shallow end so your pump can uh, pump everything out it can. Also, you can see we got a ton of leaves from this African sumac right here. So um, I did bring a bucket with me so we can hose, we can get all that stuff out of here and that, that will prevent it from clogging up our pump and throwing a wrench in the works for us here. But we got a little bit of work to do on this one and we're definitely gonna be chlorine washing this one when we're finished. Another thing I want to remind you about, if you've got a plaster pool, take into consideration what time of year it is. Plaster is very temperamental to high temperatures, above about 80 or so degrees, so um, you need to be careful of that. It'll damage and destroy the plaster if it's straight for too long when it's too hot. A double type pool like this, you can handle it. There's more than one way to give a pool a bath. A power washer can make quick work of a pool like this, but too much water pressure on a soft, old, or delicate surface will do permanent damage. If you're going to do it with good old-fashioned elbow grease, 
You may need to rinse and repeat the scrubbing to make sure you got it all. While you're scrubbing, don't forget to periodically take time to tend to your submersible pump. Clear the inlet holes of any debris or clogs and agitate the water to keep the fine particles suspended. That will allow the pump to remove the junk so you don't have to. Now that our pool is as clean as we can get it, it's time to let the chlorine do the work. Now before you start pouring the chlorine, make sure you get the whole surface wet. And make sure you pour the chlorine down in even sheets. Any streaks are going to show, so we want to make sure we get even coverage all the way around. And one more thing, before I forget, the chlorine rinse is the very last thing I do. I've already pulled out my pump. And the only thing I have left to do after the chlorine rinse is to turn the hose on in the pool. I don't want to set foot or step in this pool after I've started pouring the chlorine because I certainly don't want to track it around on the deck. Now we're not going to see immediate results from the chlorine. It takes a couple minutes, but when it does start working, you're definitely going to see a difference. Now in case you forgot how nasty this pool was, here it is before we started scrubbing and here it is after we did our chlorine rinse. The other thing I like to do is filter my source water as it goes in. You'd be amazed at how much sediment and junk these little filters pick up. Now that's more like it, looking like the sky instead of like the lawn. But remember this, a green pool means a green filter. So you can go back and watch any of our filter cleaning videos to make sure that your filter is just as clean as the pool before we fire this thing up. And speaking of filters that need help, this one's going to need some additional work. Now that the pool's been up and running for a few minutes, I can check my water and add my startup chemicals. Now I don't need to add any chlorine because there's plenty of chlorine that was down at the bottom when we started filling this thing up from the rinse. However, I will need to balance my pH and I'm going to have to add some stabilizer or cyanuric acid to make sure that I can maintain a residual chlorine level.
Now in this pool, we just did a straight drain and refill. So we've got nothing in the water except what, the, what it came out of on the tap. So um, for this, on a startup, I like to use Dichlor, um, also known as swimming pool sanitizer. Um, it's very high in stabilizer or cyanuric acid. In fact, for every um, 10 parts per million of chlorine, this adds to the water. It adds about nine parts per million of stabilizer. So uh, it's a great way to get your stabilizer up and your chlorine up at the same time. Um, I don't like to use this in any other case, but um, I'll talk more about that on our water chemistry video. Thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you found this video useful. If you'd like to learn more about the water chemistry of swimming pools, don't worry. Our series on chemistry will be out soon. And don't forget, subscribe and check us out on Howes and Facebook.